Alright, welcome to this evening's past channel on Samurai Warfare. My name is Hugh E. Butler, and I shall be your host for tonight. Well, shall we carry on then? Yes. <laughs> now we're going to be covering we're not going to be covering the samurai themselves tonight, or the practices that they did, such as Buddhism or the Bushido Code. But more on the warfare that they did, you know, from the early periods to the Shingoku period. Now keep in mind, we're going to be covering long before a samurai was written up, since no records were kept to the 12th century. Yes. Now the early samurai, too. There were single mountain warriors, all known as Ikuichi. And they were very trained in the skill of swordsmen, so they would make them very elite. <laughs> Now, as I said before, the early samurai weren't known as samurai, of course. They were known as Ikuichi, which meant single mounted warrior. Yes, what? It was written in the Gunki Mono, the war tales of the time, when a large scale battle, ginormous, was about to take place. They would fire preliminary shots into the air. And of course, they, they, when they fire the arrow into the air, they'd be calling upon the kami, or the gods. Yes. And, of course, the casualties for this was quite low. Oh. But, of course, night and surprise attacks were very common at that time. During large-scale wars, Except the Shokyu War and Mongol invasions. Now, the Mongol invasions hurt the Japanese very, very much because they didn't know that foreign enemies fought in foreign ways. Yes. But they did call upon the Divine Wind or Kamikaze. Of course, you know, World War II people like to think of it as the planes, but no, this was the Divine Winds at Sea. And this hurt the Mongols very badly. This caused the Mongols to lose and the Japanese. Now, see, there was two swords. There was the Miramasa and there was the Mesamun. Now, the samurai would take the Miramasa and they would stick it in a standing creek. And when they would stick it in the creek, the leaves floating on the top of the surface would be cut in two by the blade. And then the Mesamun, they would stick this in the creek as well. And the leaves would part just by its presence. And it was said that the Miramasa was a terrible sword and the Mesamun was just plain inhumane. Now, the 14th century saw a rise in foot soldiers. They, they were very valued because the armor changed to the Domaru style, which is much more easier to move through than the Kamasam Yori. So this was valued very much for the movement of the samurai warriors. The major changes in this period were due to terrain and siege warfare. But all in all, the battle tactics were pretty much the same. Cavalry could easily overcome infantry, but infantry could easily overcome cavalry in CQC, or close quarters combat. Ah! Ah! 